We suspect this more has to do with her wanting to continue the marriage or relationship with my client. Zachary Conley versus Athena Coach. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to enforce parenting time order, Mr. Kelly. Your Honor, uh, very quickly, very briefly, um, this court entered an order in June. My client had every other weekend parenting time and midweek parenting time. He was exercising that all the way up until the weekend of August 16th, which he received. Thereafter, um, defendant has not allowed overnight parenting time over the weekend, so he's missed four weekends up to date. He missed his parenting time on the 4th, 11th, and 18th. <clears throat> Midweek parenting time, he has had some midweek parenting time since then. However, there have been a number of occasions where she's either shown up late um, or uh, simply has no-showed. And when she's shown up late, she's oddly enough picked him up right on time. Uh, we're requesting makeup parenting time for the four weekends, Your Honor, um, and for the, for the midweek parenting times he's had. I think an appropriate remedy would be parenting time to start this weekend which would be his upcoming weekend and allow him to keep him keep the children for the following week through the following Sunday for his makeup parenting time. Uh, this is the second time we've had to address this issue before the court. There's clearly a court order in place. Uh, we're required to file this motion to get this enforced to get parenting time started. We're requesting attorney's fees in the amount of $500. And lastly, Your Honor, we suspect that um, Defendant is going to indicate to the court, well, dad's got some deviance. He's got all these other things going on. She actually called CPS on him. They did an investigation. During that investigation, there was no suspension of parenting time. There was no safety plan put in place. Um, and they've closed their investigation since then. Uh, we suspect this more has to do with her wanting to continue the marriage or relationship with my client. Um, she has made intimations to that effect, um, and she also showed up at his grandmother's house where he lives, uh, barging her way in and assaulting his grandmother, who ultimately ended up getting a PPO against him or against her. So we suspect it's not really about the children's safety as much as it's another issue relating to their relationship, which again has no bearing on this court's order. So again, we're requesting a week of makeup parenting time starting this Friday and attorney's fees in the amount of $500. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Couch, what's your response? Uh, my response to that, um, I had consulted CPS because I had found videos of children in diapers with enemas being done to them. Um, and they told me not to allow visitation if I felt that it was in the children's best interest. And I and I feel that that is the case. Um, Okay, well, in this particular case, uh, CPS cannot violate the court orders. The court will enforce its orders in this matter until such time as it's changed. You can file a petition seeking to change the orders if you have a proper cause to do so. Uh, if not, then it won't be changed. But I, uh, I do have evidence. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, I don't do interrupt, ma'am. Uh, so what happens if you have proper cause, you can file a motion to modify parenting time until such time as that occurs, the court will enforce its orders. And if the orders are not followed, the person violating the orders can end up in jail. So it's, uh, it's a choice as to what you want to do in this matter. Uh, the court will note that it uh, states, uh, the motion as well states that the defendant has been late for drop off. The court will order that uh, if, in fact, the plaintiff is late for drop-off of the children, then the plaintiff is entitled to the time extended at the end of the parenting time. So if she's late for one hour dropping them off, then he's entitled to an additional hour of parenting time to make up for that. Uh, so that will be the order. The court uh, does note, as Mr. Kelly stated, that uh, CPS has been involved. They've closed the case without taking action. So as a result, the court uh, would get infer from that that CPS did not find any basis for proceeding or they would have sustained the uh, and substantiated the, uh, the allegations. So until they do, the court simply will enforce its orders. 
the court uh, will award to Mr. Kelly the attorney fees of $500 necessitated by this motion to enforce the uh, parenting I time that will be paid within 45 days of today's date. Okay. Your Honor, in regards to the makeup parenting time, what was the court ordering? Yes, the court will or I want your client picks the children up on this Friday. Yes. Court will allow him to have the children for one week to make up for the missed parenting time. Anything else, Mr. Kelly? No, Your Honor. I'll get Anything him. else, Ms. Couch? No. Thank okay. you. That will be the order. Mr. Kelly, you can submit under seven day notice of entry. Your Honor, even though it's being submitted under seven day, can we make it clear that it is to be followed and she should show up for this Friday? Yep. Yep. We'll, we'll put it and state that it's the order to have immediate effect. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Hey, may I say something? Okay. Go ahead. Um, I am trying to get somebody through legal aid. Um, nobody has been willing to help me. This attorney, Michael Kelly, even hired a, or sorry, worked with a mediator that he had known. Um, and the mediation didn't go any further because they thought that it wasn't. Okay, we're not addressing mediation now on this couch. We're addressing the orders that were in place. Because he's an attorney. I, I don't have anybody, and yet he has a that involves children. Okay. He's watching children. That's that's the order of the court. The order will, uh, again, okay, be in effect. I'm filing against the state of Michigan. Okay, that's the order of the court, ma'am. We're going to end the hearing now. Thank you, Your Honor. I think there's a allegation from wife that uh, Mr. Eastman's opening a bunch of credit cards and ringing them up, which is not true. The defendant, Michelle, vacate the home on August 30th. Ms. Eastman has an adult daughter whose name escapes me who lives there. She's not subject to the jurisdiction of this court. She's a third party. After the divorce was filed, the um, Mrs. Eastman made some pretty horrendous accusations against Mr. Eastman and the children. Your Honor, uh, he also refinanced the home using my income and my name. Uh,